All right, so just a little member for the tutorial test uh, that uh, was done recently. Um, okay, so the first step over here, this is part of a Julia uh, olefination. It's to make a double bond. Um, I'm not going to go through the mechanism of this, so you can go and look it up at that. But essentially, butyl lithium deprotonates over there, react with the aldehyde, and then the intermediate is, is acylated, and then an elimination reaction occurs to give the double bond. And so, uh, very simply, this is the point, that carbon there which then connected to another, um, that carbon of the benzaldehyde, which uh, ultimately gave us this product over there. Uh, the next step over here is a acylation type chemistry. Everything is mixed together in one pot um, because this is a non enolizable aldehyde. So we, the only thing we can deprotonate with the ethoxide is over here. So we form the enolate over here, which is going to react with the aldehyde against the aldehyde like we had before. Um, and the key thing here is that an E1CB elimination is going to occur. So we will get the double bond uh, and then the phenyl group over there. Uh, it's not too much of a problem with this phenyl group uh, that you put on uh, is uh, either uh, like this in the Z or the E configuration. Uh, that's not too, too serious. Now this one over here is the product of a Wittig reaction. So we need the Wittig and so we recognize that one of the reagents we added was this ketone, which must be this part over here. So in other words, that bond was formed in, in the Wittig reaction. And so the Wittig salt, there's this carbon, must, the phosphorus must be here. So PPH3 uh, plus and uh, BR um, minus to uh, as the as the salt, so imbutyl lithium deprotonates over there, uh, which then reacts with the ketone, and we get the uh, uh, phosphorus uh, um, uh, triphenylphosphine oxide, uh, eliminating the double bond as the product. So just a very very simple basic Wittig reaction over there. Okay, the question over here, the deals older question. Sepa uh, Prof van Nottelo um, was perhaps maybe a little bit too many marks here um, because it is actually quite a, a simple question to, to answer. Um, we recognize that we've got the diene, this is a dienophile over there. So, what's happening is this carbon, this carbon, this one, and this one are reacting with each other there as, as partners. So, this double bond is going in, dot, 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 dot. Dot, 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 going in like that to form, and then this one is coming over there to form a new sigma bond, and this one is going back over there. So that would have been two marks over there. Uh, and what we get at the end, now this just gets a little bit messy, so that's why I'm drawing it nice and big, um, is something that looks like this. Uh, and we've got the phenyl group over there, and we've got this in the center here. We've got an O. Um, and O and that over there. Okay, this this part is there. This um, over there, which is just CO two. So the retro deals older. It's also a one step reaction. The arrows can move in whatever direction you uh, you want to have it move. Um, I'll do it this way, and that would have been the other two marks. So for this whole structure, you would go to mark, and then other two marks would have been for doing the arrows and the correct thing. So it was actually quite easy to to get five marks over there uh, very quickly. All right, this one over here is looking at the half chair because um, once we deprotonate with lithium hexamethyl disilazide, which is basically like LDA, um, we can deprotonate and so we're going to end up with something that looks like this, the enolate, O minus. And now uh, this is not, not chiral, but the minute we put, make it into an enolate, it becomes chiral. So it can be either up or down. So we can choose one versus the other, the isopropyl group. Uh, I'll choose up. And so what we need to do is consider both chair conformations. So the one will have the things going like that. Uh, the other one will have it the other way around, like that. So we stick. There's the O minus over there, the counter round. Isopropyl is at this point over there, so it's pointing up. Uh, and on this one, it's the O minus, it's pointing in an equatorial position. So now it's clear that the equilibrium lies to the right hand side. This is the most important. Uh, use um, this uh, because isopropyl is equatorial. 
right? So we've indicated which one we need to use. Then the reaction, this enolate, is going to come back in, and it's either going to attack in this direction over there or attack in that direction over there to the electrophile, which is butyl bromide. Um, so we can just label that as either going to A or B. And what we've looked at is that if we go to A, we should recognize that that's going to form the twist boat. So A uh, gives twist boat, uh, which is disfavored. All right, and so we actually can draw that uh, out. So, um, So here's our oxygen over there. It's forming a bond. This double bond dot 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 is going towards the uh, electrophile, which you can just have as an E over there. Don't forget there is actually an isopropyl group over there. So this is the twist boat um, a transition state. Uh, and B uh, gives twist chair. Uh, which is favored. And what does that one look like? What I do is I just lightly sketch this, on this line the same and then cross somewhere in the middle. This is the double bond initially was sitting over there, but then it becomes a little bit more parallel to the one at the back. So the one at the back is like this now. And we can put in the other bits. Is the equatorial isopropyl group. Um, so B dot 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 line as well to the O and the E is coming in over there. So it's coming in from uh, the bottom over there, and so that's the, the twist chair. And that would be fine. So obviously it's coming from the B, which is the bottom, and it's you know facing at the bottom, so that's uh, all right. Okay, so the next question is using Falcon Arn. Um, the reason being is we, we're using uh, so we're using Falcon Arn um, because no chelation. So, so it's uh, Falcon Arn because no chelation with lithium. Okay, so we first look at this one over there. And it's H and now um, what I'll do is I've got an O which is coming out on this side over there. I've got the H which is coming out on this side and then I've got this other bit, this part over here, which is actually part of an R group. The O is not an OH, I guess it's also got an R, say so R prime. So this is fine for this. Um, obviously those two things are connected. You could have tried to draw the thing in, but it can get a bit complicated. What we need to do is we need to have for the falcon on rotate so that hetero atom so it's not the largest group in this case we've got a hetero atom the hetero atom takes precedence so the hetero atom uh, is at 90 degrees uh, and so uh, we look at our two options so the one will be there the other one will be there. I'm going to put the O on this side over here. The O is R prime. On that side over there, and put in the bits. Dum, dum. Okay, so I move that a bit over there. So that's H and R. And they're connected. And if we do it the other way around, the R is there, the H is there. So those are connected in some way. So, um, this is uh, uh, preferred attack uh, at 107.5 degrees. Bergy Dunnitz. Okay. Um, Therefore, so looking at that originally, this one, this side over here to the left was the top face. This is the bottom, so therefore it's at the top face. And for extra brownie points, we can say that the top face over here is actually the side face because we're going around one, two, so we're going around to the left, uh, which happens to be the side face um, in this one. 
Uh, and uh, so uh, when we draw out the product, it's coming in from the top. Uh, safest bet over here is follow the zigzags. So let's let's keep the O in the plane um, because part of that so it comes OH. The nuclear valve came in from the top. That means that the hydrogen is pointing down. That's the one that went down, and the nuclear file is this uh, um, ring. There we go. And yeah, let's just put in all the other things over there. BN. Oh, it's basically that. Right. Yeah, there's the, uh, that's a problem, and that's absolutely fine. That could have given you uh, full marks for that question over there. Okay, so uh, Zimmerman Traxler. Um, okay, first step making the boron enolate. Uh, mechanistically important to recognize that the reaction occurs in two steps, and there's a chlorine there. The first is the lone pair of electrons going onto. Uh, the oxygen, and that gives us the um, positively charged oxygen boron cyclohexyl, and that acidifies because my positively charged acidifies next door. Either side is actually doesn't matter, so we then use triethylamine, and this gives us the uh, enolate um, that we uh, that's been given over there. So that's just two marks. Very simple. Uh, and then drawing out the Zimmerman Traxler is to demonstrate how the Zimmerman can be used to explain the stereochemical outcome of this uh, reaction. So, uh, what we have to do is we have to sketch out lightly the, uh, the chair. Okay, it's not the greatest one I've done here. So, we know the boron is going to go there and it's got cyclohexyl. Uh, there's two of those. You can draw them in if you want to. Um, this part is our uh, enolate. And this part is our aldehyde, which needs to be at an equatorial position over there. So this is connected there, and there's a formal bond to that. Um, this uh, inlet is the one that was given right at the beginning over there. It happens to be a trans inlet, so that means that the methyl is pointing in that direction over there. And the rest, this ethyl group, is actually just going straight up like that. So that gives us this and the reaction, that line is connecting. So um, from a reactive point of view, if we're going to draw this out, that's what's happening over there. Whoops, this one was actually phenyl. Sorry, I forgot that. What we do want to point out though is that this, um, the aldehyde uh, must have group Equatorial. All right. So once that has happened, uh, afterwards we get redraw it again. So you get lots of practice drawing these things out. So we've got a new bond, new bond. That's a uh, double bond. Uh, boron is still there with the cyclohexyl. It's connected to the oxygen. It's not dotted to that. There's the that part. There's the methyl and there's the phenyl group over there. Right. So then what we can recognize is here's the zigzag, 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 zig, all right, of our product. Uh, and the uh, CH3 is pointing up and the OH on that zigzag is pointing down. It's actually the opposite of what I drew up over there. I drew it the other way around. I did that on purpose because I didn't want you to redraw this out for me. Your structure, if you've done it the way that I've normally taught, you could have done it another way, but um, according to this structure over here, um, what you're going to get is something that looks uh, like this. And the CH3 is pointing up, and the OH is pointing down, and it's plus minus. Okay, so we must uh, indicate that. All right, so, um, <clears throat> so it's plus minus, it's racemic. Uh, and this is the one that's uh, given over there. Um, so, yeah, so therefore uh, it is anti -ene. All right, so that would have given you the six marks for that one. 
And then the last page. Um, so this is chemistry, uh, comes out of second year uh, chemistry. Just a reminder, I want you just to be able to draw out these structures. So uh, if you draw out the lowest energy conformation of both of those um, over there, so the T-butyl group is going to control and it's going to want to be in an equatorial position. So if we draw out the one, so there's, I always draw this uh, chair because it's easier for me. Uh, so it's equatorial up, so T-butyl group is over there. We count around, that puts the bromine in an axial down like that. Uh, if we draw the other one out. Um, like that. Uh, this one, again, needs to be in a um, equatorial position up. But the bromine over here is now also up. So it has to be equatorial, so parallel to everything. So I wanted to see that you can draw these out very neatly. That's the one thing. Um, uh, in this case, case BR is axial and has a proton um, adjacent axial. Therefore, the E2 elimination possible. Whereas with this one over here, <coughs> um, no uh, proton uh, antiperiplanar. Therefore, E2 not possible. All right, so that would have been fine. Very basic answer. You could have elaborated a little bit more by showing maybe this axial proton over here, the base, which is LDA, picking this up. And so you can kind of see these two things anti periplanar. But there's no, these two protons here, and the same with those ones over there. Um, those two, these two equatorial, they cannot, can never be anti periplanar. And this one's axial, and this one's equatorial, so they can't be anti periplanar to each other. The only way that this is going to get anti periplanar is that we have to do a ring flip to the high energy conformation. So both this would be axial and this would be axial, and then an elimination could occur. However, at the low temperatures, it's unlikely that that's going to happen. So the answer for this one is that uh, this is. This one is remaining. Okay, this equals uh, equals that over there. Uh, <clears throat> the last the last question over here actually involves just a really long series of um, uh, mechanisms. It's it's, re it's recognizing that the most acidic proton is this proton over there. So when we deprotonate that, um, the enolate can add to to this. All right, and so we I'm not going to draw out the whole mechanism. You should be able to uh, figure that out yourself. Um, but uh, we end up with uh, one, two, we end up with well, uh, something that looks like this. Uh, T, all right. Uh, initially, so that goes there. Boom, boom, boom. Does a conjugate addition. We get this. Um, then we actually have to tautomerize this, um, uh, which is a two-step process. Really, that's the inlet has to come back to form the ketone, and then the base has to deprotonate again. Um, over here to form the new enolate, uh, and once once that happens, you can then uh, close on the remaining ketone. So we will get something. Sorry, O minus an enolate. So we get something that looks like this: CO two T. Yes, that and that over there. So so this can now close in on this ketone. Uh, which then after an E1CB elimination uh, would give you this product over there because you can see one, two, three, four, five, six come back to there. Uh, so you get the six membered ring. Okay, so it's a uh, actually four marks is probably a bit low um, for, for this because it involved quite a lot of steps, but um, it is just uh, all the standard chemistry in order to get to, uh, get to that. All right, so that's the uh, memo.